I'm Ben Perlman, the county attorney, and we've had a very busy year in the county attorney's office, and that's really because when things are busy in county offices and departments, we're busy. Um, our general idea is we want to be involved as early as possible in any issues or problems that arise so we can help steer, we can um, try to avoid litigation, and if um, we do end up in court, which happens sometimes, that we have the best case possible and we're able to defend the decisions that people in offices and departments make. Most of the work we do is general work, providing advice to everybody in the county system who is wondering how the law affects the projects they're working on. In addition to uh, a lot of advice that we give every day, there are certain ongoing projects. We have every year about 150 active dependency and neglect cases, and so we'll be in court on, on those. We have about 5,000 active child support cases, and we have a constant presence in court to address those issues. And in fact, Boulder County's child support team was just recognized for having the best compliance numbers in the state. We are currently bracing ourselves for an awful lot of property tax appeals. When valuations go up, particularly when they go up substantially, we end up with a lot of appeals and a lot of cases that go either to the Board of Assessment Appeals down in Denver or to arbitration or in district court. Every year we have a lot of cases um, that come out of the jail. Jails are notoriously difficult to run and so we have typically four or five cases that are going on. It seems that every year we have more and more contracts to process in our office in conjunction with the, the various departments. Uh, this year we'll process well over 2,000 contracts, which is really about 10 every day for every working day. Some of them take a few minutes, they're a renewal, they're a simple contract. Others, like the EcoCycle contract or the SWIFT contract, will take hundreds and hundreds of hours and, and of negotiation over the course of uh, months. We have a lot of open records requests that are made by members of the public every year now. Um, five years ago we probably would have 50 or 75. Now there's, there hasn't been a year recently where we haven't been over 300 and that's true for this year as well. Happily this year the county has invested in a new Quora uh, open records software that should make it much easier for members of the public to get information uh, from us and it contains an archive so they can go back and look at previous requests. So earlier this year in March we um, drafted and the board approved new oil and gas regulations that are um, very comprehensive and detailed. So we've been working on rule makings down at the state level in an effort to try to reduce impacts from oil and gas development. We work on oil and gas in our office every day and we recognize how important it is to, to the elected officials, to the public, and to just about everybody that we meet. Looking forward to next year, uh, we certainly don't expect that it will be less busy. I'm just happy that as we turn into 2018 that we have such a remarkable staff here in the county attorney's office. We've got great attorneys, we've got great paralegals, great support staff, and we're really just about as ready as any office our size could be to handle whatever comes up. So we're looking forward to working with departments and offices in the new year on all of the new issues. Hi, I'm Joe Pelley, I'm the County Sheriff, and uh, talk about some highlights, lowlights, things that happened in 2017. 2017, uh, again, we continued to have some challenges. We had a triple homicide, uh, which really uh, affected our resources. Our, all of our detectives worked on that nonstop for weeks. Really proud of our investigators because within a few weeks they had a case wrapped up, an arrest made, and a prosecution pending. That was a difficult case and uh, hats off to our detectives for that. We're continuing to see challenges with the jail, jail population, uh, particularly in regards to the number of serious offenders and offenders with serious mental illness. We are working on some solutions right now. In the last couple of years, the commissioners have funded a number of new positions in the jail. That's starting to have a really positive impact on the amount of overtime our staff has had to work and the morale in the jail because they're starting to see some relief uh, next year in 18 to hire uh, 
four additional deputies and promote four to the rank of sergeant because our span of control has become so large. So one of our major projects in our operations division this past year has been the implementation of body-worn cameras for all of our deputies. We're doing that in patrol and in uh, the jail. The hard part of this whole thing is storing, cataloging, retrieving, and redacting tens of thousands of contacts and tens of thousands of hours of uh, interviews, investigations, um, traffic stops every year. They've already, though, they've already had a payoff. I've had two people call to file a complaint about the actions of our deputies. You know, well, in two cases I told two people, I reviewed the body camera video and what they were telling me didn't match what I was seeing on the video and I, I wanted to make sure they were certain they wanted to file a report. And after they found out that there was video, they both decided not to file a complaint. So um, I think this could be, you know, in the future, this could be really a huge savings for the county in regards to our liability, and civil claims and that kind of thing. So we're pretty excited. So one of our other ongoing challenges is in our communication center, and that's with dispatchers. Uh, it's really hard to hire and retain dispatchers, uh, which makes it hard on the existing staff who are working a ton of overtime trying to keep up. We need to look at um, the whole package and determine what we need to do differently to hire and retain people. Um, you know, I guess the good news is we're not alone in this. This is an issue that's going on all across the country and across the state, and most uh, communication centers are struggling with this as well. But I sure would like to be the um, department that figures out the, the uh, issue and solves it, because it's a critical position for public safety in our community that we have good people answering the phones and dispatching those resources. We are working with a committee of stakeholders. We're working on uh, building a proposal for a solution to jail crowding, and it's going to probably or likely involve a new alternative sentence facility where work release, community corrections, day reporting, work crews, all, where all those folks would go, and we would take all those uh, people out of the jail and do a little remodeling in the jail, harden it up, and save those hard beds for people that really need a secure housing. We're pretty excited because we are starting to find consensus. We're starting to build agreement about what we're going to do and how we're going to try to move forward. Hi everybody, I'm Frank Alexander from the Boulder County Department of Housing and Human Services. and. 2017 was a, a year of tremendous accomplishment for the department, as well as a year of a lot of uncertainty and preparation for that uncertainty. And I think one of the most uh, important things that we've been doing is just really focusing on our mission of building community and empowering people and strengthening families. And we do that all within the social determinants of health context. And what that means is we see a family holistically and we work with that family or individual to really get at the ones that are the root cause of their challenge or their moment of crisis. And that has led us to do some, I think, really incredible partnership work this year. Most importantly, we've been working within our family resource network, the backbone of which is really the R Center, uh, EFA and Sister Carmen in Longmont, Boulder and Lafayette which is a distributed network of care that families and individuals access. And that's been one of our greatest successes of, of 2017. The other thing that we're super proud of is our continued work around health care. As health insurance is so important in the lives of every one of us, you know, over the time that the departments have been merged, we have uh, served more than uh, five times the number of people that we used to serve in health care per year. Now we're supporting 75,000 uh, Boulder County residents uh, with health care supports, which is a quarter of Boulder County's population. And that has allowed us to reduce the uninsured population in the county down from 15% to 4.1%, which is an incredible benefit. And probably our most successful and most important regional initiative has been our effort to improve access to affordable housing across the county. Our regional affordable housing partnership 
has spent the last two years developing a draft regional affordable housing plan and going out to the entire community with about 50 public presentations. The plan has already been adopted by Boulder County, the city of Longmont, the city of Louisville, the city of Lafayette, the city of Boulder, and it's scheduled to be adopted by the rest of our jurisdictions in the county. And it has a really ambitious and aggressive goal of tripling the number of affordable housing units in our county to 18,000 units by 2035, which is, has really led us in the county to uh, step up our game around producing affordable housing. And that's been incredibly successful in a number of ways in 2017. The first is, of course, our Kestrel project, which is, as we speak, um, people are moving in. The project has been completed. There are 200 homes now in the Kestrel community. And we have a diverse population there who uh, is excited to start their lives in the city of Louisville. In addition to that, we have a tremendous partnership with the city of Lafayette that just in the next five years, we anticipate increasing the affordable housing stock in Lafayette by more than 750 homes. And then the city of Lafayette uh, was a tremendous partner with us and purchased 24 acres of land for affordable housing, which we anticipate will be up to 500 affordable homes over the next five years. So those, those have been incredible successes. Also, we've done a lot of work around our childcare program. We're actually at historic highs in our spending in the CCAP program, Child Care Assistance Program. We're spending more than double what the state provides us for access to um, high quality early child care. Uh, we do know that there's a tremendous amount of need for additional access to high quality and affordable child care. And we'd love to see that program grow over time as we kind of work through the current federal and state situation. And I think that leads me to kind of my final couple points, which is it really is the job of Boulder County to make sure that we don't go backwards in that effort to promote a prevention-based system of care that really focuses on family well-being in the way that our community has asked us to be here for them. I think for me, 2017 has been a year of success and preparation at the same time. And, and I really give thanks to the many hundreds of department employees and county employees who have worked hard for our community. And um, thank you for a wonderful year and thank you for all you're doing to make sure that we continue to do what we need to do for the residents here in Boulder County. Hi, I'm Cindy Braddock, the Boulder County Assessor. We're just finishing up our reappraisal year, and the reappraisal year is the first year of a two-year cycle where we set values for Boulder County properties. We spent the first part of the year establishing values, and on May 1st, we sent out over 120,000 notices of valuation to property owners in Boulder County. In May, we started our county appeals process and took in 13,000 appeals from property owners. We spent the summer working through those. In August, we sent out notices of determination to the property owners, letting them know what the review of their property was. And we also set um, preliminary values for taxing jurisdictions. And we sent out a, a certification of value to them. In September, we collaborated with the County Board of Equalization and we set hearings to hear the next level of appeal. And during the months of September and October, we heard slightly under 3,000 appeals. The answers for those were sent out in early November by the County Board of Equalization, about the same time that our office was setting final values to send out to taxing jurisdictions so they could set their budgets. And at this point, we are doing the final work towards tax roll, which we will deliver in January of 2018. Now, some interesting things we did this year. We started using a new software called Prognos, and software, this software allows us to produce a notice and a, a hearing report that look a lot like a fee appraisal. So we're able to put a lot of information in these reports to help property owners understand our process and understand how we arrived at their values. Another thing we've been working through this year is we've had a series of retirements, which we're sad to see people go, and we've also hired some great new staff and we're looking forward to opportunities with them. 
As this year ends, we move into 2018, which is our intervening year. In the intervening year, we only establish new values for properties that have new construction and remodels, a much smaller set of properties. We also are working hard towards our next reappraisal year in 2019. I also want to take a moment to say thank you to all of my staff. This year was a very busy year, and I don't know what, how we could have done this without them. So thank you very much. Hi, I'm George Gerstel, Transportation Director for the Boulder County Transportation Department. 2017 has been an incredibly busy year and a lot of work by a lot of people doing wonderful things to help people in the county get to and from where they need to go, when they need to be there safely. It takes an amazing amount of work to ensure everyone can get where they want to go. A lot of that work is visible, like building and repairing roads and bridges, but there are also a lot of folks working behind the scenes that are crucial. The department's multimodal and planning division has done tremendous work. This year they're leading studies and lending their expertise, developing plans to improve mobility and safety on State Highway 7 and State Highway 119 corridors. They're also busy designing and building new multi-use paths like the IBM Connector Trail and building new bike and ride shelters to make it easier to ride bikes to take the bus. This group is also raising awareness that transportation is a basic social and economic need through our Mobility for All program. This year, our floodplain group finished the first phase of floodplain remapping that will develop a new floodplain maps that reflect the post-2013 creek alignments for all of our major watersheds. Our development review team works closely with anyone planning on building within the county to ensure that they're complying with county transportation and flood standards. And they have led the development of new stormwater quality standards that will be implemented this coming year to reduce pollution from construction zones. I'd also like to recognize the men and women who would rather stay out of the spotlight, but absolutely deserve a moment in the sun because without them, we'd all be moving a lot slower, if at all. I'm talking about our road maintenance and fleet service divisions. These folks are responsible for snow removal, road grading, dust control, patching potholes, bridge and culvert work, and much, much more. This year alone, they plowed almost 85,000 miles of roadway, applied almost 8 million pounds of new asphalt and graded over 900 miles of gravel roads. Our team of highly skilled mechanics and parts shop personnel keep over 1,000 pieces of equipment from dump trucks to lawn mowers fully functioning so the entire county can do its work. We're making great progress in rebuilding from the September 2013 flood. In 2017, some of the more significant work completed includes a new bridge across the Little Thompson River on 83rd, repairs to Apple Valley Road and Bridge over the North St. Vrain, restoration of a large portion of Lower Four Mile Creek, and installation of a major structure on Dillon Road at Rock Creek. Our team has also led the private access replacement program that is helping 42 households improve their flood damaged private access by managing 31 individual projects to repair and replace their bridges and driveways damaged by the 2013 flood. The team is also managing, in collaboration with Land Use and Parks and Open Space, the demolition and restoration of 41 properties that were damaged by the flood and purchased by the county to reduce future flood risks. 2017 was a good year for non-flood work as well, including resurfacing of over 15 miles of our roads. We've also resurfaced and put shoulders on Arapahoe Road and 95th Street between Valmont Road and the Lafayette city limits, including a major intersection improvement at Valmont and Isabel Road that'll make travel safer for all modes. In 2018, we'll be working on several high-profile projects that we hope to get started on, including a major extension of the Boulder Canyon multi-use trail, reconstruction and addition of shoulders on Brainerd Lake Road, as well as our annual resurfacing and chip seal programs and concrete improvements, including the extension of William Forks, Swin Lakes Concrete Sidewalks Trail, and Gun Barrel. We've processed over 3,000 invoices, totaling nearly $28 million, and almost all of it has been done quickly within 25 days of receiving the receipt or invoice. And we really appreciate our administrative staff as well as all the other part of the county that makes this happen. Overall and above all, we really thank the public for all their patience as we work through the repairs to the roads and creeks. I'm Emma Hall, the Boulder County Coroner. 
And I think that the thing I'm the most excited about accomplishing in 2017 is we had the highest employee survey results in the county, which actually reflects what we focused on in the office this year. We were able to restructure a couple of positions and restructure kind of the flow of management in the office. And it's really helped to create a better morale. And then also we've been working really hard on our reserve uh, program. So that really helps to have the additional resources we need in the office without having a fully funded uh, full-time employee. And the other thing I'm most excited about accomplishing in 2017 is our computer system. We were finally able to go live. It's been a multi-year um, project for not only our office but other um, members throughout the county, especially the IT department. So I think everyone is very um, relieved and satisfied that we have finally gone live and it seems to be working very well for us. So those were our two biggest accomplishments in 2017. Uh, what we see on the horizon for 2018 is um, getting our office accredited, which would uh, basically give us you know, a certification at a national level, which not a lot of coroner's offices have done yet, but it is um, something that's a big recommendation for 2020, so we're gonna start this. Uh, 2018, make sure that we're leading the way um, as Boulder County typically does in any of their departments. So um, it would be great to see those accomplishments come and the milestones as we go through the year. It's really exciting to um, go into a new year knowing that we've got a great solid team and that they're all you know, doing the things that they want to do in the office and just seeing that professional development is so wonderful and gratifying for me as a leader and uh, so just a big thanks to them for all that they do and continue to do in the office. Hi, I'm Robin Bohannon, the Director of Boulder County Community Services. In addition to our more than 50 programs that we provide Boulder County residents across the lifespan, we really have focused this last year and into next year on assuring that our programs and services are aligned with community-based initiatives. And that's what I'd like to focus on today. In our area agency on aging, we are leveraging a grant from the Colorado Health Foundation to really support better health outcomes for seniors in partnerships with healthcare systems. Two examples are our diabetes prevention program and a partnership with Boulder Community Health to support care transitions. For our community action programs, we focused on removing barriers with strategic partnerships. Some examples of this are a college savings account for Head Start families in partnership with CAP using the College Invest program. Other examples are partnerships with businesses to provide donated dryers and washers, um, increased car repair services, and some unique partnerships such as closing the digital divide by providing laptops for circle leaders. Community justice services, we're continuing our work ensuring that low risk offenders can be safely supervised in the community. And we've really focused on increasing access to stabilizing mental health and substance abuse services so that while they're waiting trial, they can be in the community, we can assure public safety and we can reduce costly jail bed usage. In partnership with the Colorado Child Care Assistance Program and the Colorado Preschool Program, we've not only increased hours, but we've enhanced our teacher to child ratio and provided a more individualized student environment. Workforce Boulder County has really started to focus on supporting people with limited work experience. This means expanding on a model called work-based learning. Work-based learning provides increased internships, apprenticeships, and on-the-job training. For many of our participants, their wages has increased to $17.65 an hour, which is more than a sustainable wage for Boulder County. In 2018, we're looking forward to expand this to over 140 work-based learning placements across a variety of industry sectors. For our Boulder County Homeless Services Collaborative, Community Services is leading and managing a partnership with Boulder County Department of Housing and Human Services, the City of Boulder, and the City of Longmont to assure that those are homeless and most vulnerable in our community get assessed and get focused to the right services that will support permanent supportive housing. To date, we've screened over 600 individuals. 
of those screened, half have been moved into a navigation pathway that will ex the, exit them out of the homeless system. The other half is being provided more intensive shelter-based services to support a permanent housing exit. The other project, Invisible Boulder County, is a multimedia video and photo project in partnership with our community nonprofit providers. We really wanted to give a voice and an audience to people who feel excluded, who aren't often listened to and feel like they don't have a voice. I would be remiss to not talk about our wonderful administrative and fiscal staff who've really provided us with a roadmap to assure that we can continue our approach to lean government, which supports sustainability of all of the programs I've previously mentioned. I really want to thank all of the staff of Community Services. It's been a challenging year and they have been committed with heart, their passion, and really attached to our mission um, in providing the best in public service. So thank you everybody. Hi, it's Paul Weissman from outside the Treasurer's Office. Uh, 2017 was a pretty good year for us. We've uh, collected over 99% of the taxes owed. Uh, we've been very aggressive uh, with folks that are delinquent in their taxes, you know, really first trying to get them to pay uh, before there are further consequences, but also making sure that they understand, especially a business personal property tax, that the consequences are real. Uh, it really, to me, is a fairness question. One liquor store is paying, the other liquor store should pay. You know, one hair salon is paying, the other hair salon is paying. Uh, so we've been really out and about. Uh, this year, just like last year, I personally visited over 300 businesses, and we've got most of them now either on a payment plan or, or having been paid up. Uh, I'm also proud the, of the work we've done investing in Boulder County. Uh, you know, we have a, a pretty good portfolio that we invest all over the place, but we've really worked hard with local banks to make sure that we could put CDs and sizable CDs here in the county. Uh, we've also really kept our eye out for municipal bonds, the City of Boulders or Louisville's or Longmont's and school district bonds, both in St. Brain Valley and Boulder Valley, so we invest in those as well. Uh, I really like bringing money home uh, to the community when we can. 2018 is going to be an exciting year. Uh, you know, we're about ready to, to put out the tax notices. Uh, should be about $630 million total that we collect, uh, invest and disperse to the 120 taxing authorities uh, throughout the county. Uh, I, I really absolutely am convinced, uh, I know for sure, they could do it without me, but I couldn't do it without the staff. Uh, so looking forward to a great 2018 after what I consider a really good 2017. Hi, I'm Dale Case, Director of the Boulder County Land Use Department. 2017 was another active year for us here in land use, which does planning, building, and development for the unincorporated portions of Boulder County. The 50 people here in land use had a great year, continuing to make accomplishments. Fulfilling our mission to utilize community involvement, collaboration with our partner agencies, and education to develop and implement new programs that incorporate safety, sustainability, and resiliency to protect, preserve, and enhance the values of the community. A milestone was reached in the county's ongoing 2013 flood recovery with the completion of the acquisition phase of the flood recovery buyout program. The program has served as a hazard mitigation planning tool and recovery option for 47 affected families. Purchasing property and removing structures from within the floodplain and other high hazard areas will make it possible to allow for natural floodplain function while minimizing risk to people and property during future flood events. The project has taken a tremendous amount of effort over the past four years by county staff, along with partners at the local, state, and federal levels. As recognition for the work and the value of the program, we were awarded a merit award from the Colorado chapter of the American Planning Association. Another milestone was reached in 2017 with a successful update to one of the gold standards in planning, the Boulder Valley Comprehensive Plan. This update involves significant efforts and collaboration from almost all other county departments and the City of Boulder. We continue to focus on ensuring Boulder County's planning and health values are protected as we address the issues surrounding potential oil and gas development in the county. Land use staff led a tremendous effort among numerous county departments in crafting the strongest oil and gas development regulations in the state, which were incorporated into our land use code in March. The land use code, which is a living document, was also updated to modernize the floodplain regulations and ensure accurate floodplain maps that enable proactive measures to protect people and property before the next significant flood event. 
Another code update involves stronger zoning regulations for recreational shooting sites, allowing shooting to occur in a safe, accessible manner while addressing environmental impacts and controlling the impacts to neighbors and other recreational users. Another cornerstone of the department is to be responsive and open in our efforts to protect health and safety through our building permit program. We expect to process more than 2,700 building permit applications in 2017, with building inspectors covering 720 square miles of the county, conducting over 9,000 inspections. Our EZBP program, where we issue simpler per building permits with the goal of issuance over the counter or within 24 hours, has increased to about 60% of all permits issued as compared to 47% in 2014. Staff has conducted more than 350 pre-application meetings with potential applicants for planning processes. This is a great opportunity to provide residents with the necessary information for them to submit their project, and even more importantly, to begin to form a relationship and to explain some of the whys behind our regulations. We have started our three-year budget-funded project to scan all our files and are currently on track with those efforts. In October, we celebrated National Community Planning Month with a free bike and bus tour highlighting planning in the southeast portion of Boulder County. Participants learned how land use planning in transportation planning, open space preservation, housing, and historic preservation have shaped the cities in Boulder County's past, present, and future. 2017 was the fourth year of the Model Wildfire Partners Program that helps Boulder County homeowners prepare for wildfires. This collaborative partnership continues to strengthen as more than 1,400 homeowners in the programs are receiving invaluable technical assistance and financial support to help build more resilient mountain communities through wildfire mitigation. On the land use agenda for 2018, as the county and society struggles with the issue of affordable housing, we will be embarking on the update to the housing element of the Boulder County Comprehensive Plan. We have also been in discussions with Parks and Open Space and Public Health regarding addressing some of the issues we are hearing from the county's farming and agricultural community. In early 2018, we'll be working with the community to identify and implement possible solutions, which will most likely involve updates to the county's land use code. We are looking forward to 2018 and the tremendous opportunities and challenges it will present. I know the staff here at Land Use will rise up to that challenge again and again, like always. And along with our partners around the county and the community, we will make 2018 the best year yet. My name is Hillary Hall. I'm the Boulder County Clerk and Recorder. We actually had some groundbreaking events happen this year in election. We upgraded our voting system and that takes uh, a lot of time with testing and ensuring that it works properly. From the voter side though, most voters didn't notice anything other than that they were voting on an oval now instead of a square. Just really want to shout out to all of the, the staff both in the elections office and then partnering with IT to make all of those things happen whenever you implement new technology. A lot of people are involved. The other really great thing that happened in elections is um, Colorado became the first state to implement risk limiting audits statewide. And we're particularly proud here in Boulder County as back in 2008, we led the initial efforts to make this possible and then helped write the law in 2009. So looking ahead for next year, we'll have uh, three elections. We'll have a special election, we'll have a new primary election um, that will be uh, different for people too because um, unaffiliated can now vote in the primary and they don't have to affiliate with a party. So that always uh, has additional technology implications as well as process implications. And then in the fall we'll have the general election and on that will be the governor, um, our congressional districts as well as our state leaders and uh, many of our county offices will be on that as well. Um, another division is our recording department and they um, are responsible for all of the documents especially around real estate and marriage licenses. I think one of the things that um, I find really surprising is that they record over 70,000 documents a year and all of those are anywhere from you know three to 20 pages long and so keeping track of that, indexing it. Um, it goes along with our efforts uh, to be fully digitized with all of our records. We got most of that done last year and now this year we're in the process of finishing up making that accessible to the public. And our third division is the motor vehicle division that's uh, primary responsibility is ensuring the license plates process for our county. We service over 18,000 citizens a month. Some of our improvements for helping our citizens get their service better is we implemented um, kiosks where it's a self-serve and you can, for renewals, um, just go up and 
uh, process your own transaction and then walk away with your tabs right then. This is especially good for our procrastinators who come in at the end of the month. And in 2018, we have a major project coming, and that is to upgrade our entire motor vehicle system. Our current system is a state system, and it's built, uh, it's still a DOS-based program. So we're pretty excited to have a web-based program for um, training and obviously for serving the public in a more efficient manner. I'd also like to take the opportunity to just really thank the staff that we have here in the clerk and recorder's office. We are a really high uh, interface with our community. Um, Almost every citizen has to come to our office and work with us in some fashion, and our staff is so dedicated to that and day in and day out work to provide the best in public service. Hi, I'm Jeff Sayak. I'm the director of Boulder County Public Health. And here at Public Health, our goal is to make sure that everybody has an opportunity for a healthy life. In 2017, we made great strides toward helping make sure that people had healthy choices and healthy environments. We supported teens who worked with businesses in Lafayette and with the Lafayette City Council to make water or milk the default drink in kids' meals. This was the first ordinance of its kind in Colorado. Through our Double Up Food Bucks program, we also made it easier for families to get fresh fruits and vegetables and support local farmers. Nearly 900 families used this benefit to buy healthy food at our farmers' markets. Speaking of healthy food, we won a prestigious national award for protecting people from foodborne illness because of our approach, less than 1% of restaurants in Boulder County have poor food safety ratings. We trained 160 businesses and 240 childcare providers to make it easier for mothers to continue to give their babies breast milk after they go back to work, which we know from research makes babies healthier. 95% of our childcare centers who take care of infants and are now certified as breastfeeding friendly. We worked with Lafayette residents to make sure teens have safe, healthy places to hang out instead of using drugs. We also launched the Out of Reach campaign with tips for keeping drugs out of kids' hands. And we created and implemented a plan with police, doctors, parents, mental health experts, and many others in our community to help fight the opioid epidemic. We partnered regionally and launched the Let's Talk campaign to help get people talking about mental health in our community. We also partnered with Longmont and our Mental Health Coalition to get more than 800 people trained in mental health first aid. Over the past year, we did 500 inspections of oil and gas facilities and testified about our work to the Air Quality and Oil and Gas Commission. Our inspections and reports provided support that led to improved air quality regulations in 2017. We have now worked with more than 4,500 businesses to reduce their waste and save energy and water. That's nearly 70% of all of our businesses in Boulder County. And because of the new rebates we promoted this year, five times more businesses installed solar panels than ever before. In Boulder County, 54% of our homes have unhealthy levels of radon, and we know that radon causes lung cancer. We led the effort across the region to get builders, realtors, inspectors, and elected officials to make sure homes are safe from radon. 140 realtors have been trained about radon and have taken the pledge to talk directly with their clients. In 2018, of course, we'll continue all this work and we'll have a new focus. We'll be making sure that all people, no matter where they come from, how much money they earn, the color of their skin, the language that they speak, have an equal opportunity for a healthy life. We could not be a leader in the state and in the region if it was not for each and every one of our staff. And it's because of each and every one of them that we are as successful as we are today. Hi, I'm Stan Garnett. I'm the District Attorney for the 20th Judicial District, which is Boulder County. 2017 has been a really terrific year here in the District Attorney's Office. First of all, I'm lucky to have absolutely amazing staff that work in this office, top to bottom. Uh, great trial lawyers, great victim advocates, great investigators, great clerical support. I'm just proud to work with them every day and really appreciate what they contribute uh, to safety and to justice in Boulder County. We've had a lot of very complicated investigations and trials this year. We continue to emphasize uh, public safety in every level, particularly uh, serious economic crime, of which we see a lot in Boulder County, and doing everything we can to both uh, prevent and prosecute um, violent crime of any sort. Uh, one of the things that's kept us very busy this year is that we've had more homicides this year than we've had in a long time. Homicides are always challenging. Every one of my major cases uh, has somewhere between six and 10 
uh, people working on the case, usually one or two lawyers, and then a lot of people uh, working behind the scenes. So those cases are very demanding. We've really been impressed by uh, making some progress on uh, reducing uh, levels of sex assault in Boulder County, seeing increased reporting, which is really healthy. Some of that's tied to the fact we now have a SANE program in Boulder County. The rape kit examination is available at Boulder Community Hospital, which has helped us to keep, uh, make it uh, comfortable and safe for survivors of sexual violence to report that and for us to prosecute the cases. And I'm pleased with the le level of success we're having there. One thing that's been pretty exciting uh, is that we're almost to the point where we're paperless here in the district attorney's office. When you think about what's involved in a processing a criminal case traditionally, there's a lot of paper. Paper reports from the police, all of our filings are in paper. And uh, we now are at a point where uh, we have electronic discovery, where we get all of our um, reports from the police departments uh, over the internet, over uh, uh, in the cloud, wherever that is. And uh, we then can use those uh, and assemble the information in an electronic file and also produce it to the um, defense electronically. That's cutting down significantly in the amount of paper we use, which is great for the environment and for sustainability, and also actually easier for my staff. They can handle their cases on a laptop or on a, uh, an iPad, and that's been terrific. We've seen some very serious juvenile crime this year, and a lot of that's made the newspapers. We continue to be really excited that the majority of our uh, juvenile cases uh, we're now able to process without even taking them to court. Uh, through our diversion program and our restorative justice program. Uh, and the folks involved in that, we now have seven full-time people working in that area, are doing a terrific job of holding young people accountable promptly and effectively and efficiently, and also helping them get back on their feet quickly by not having to deal with the long uh, amount of time that's involved in the court system. So I'm really just continue to be delighted to have this job and this chance to work with such great folks and every day is interesting and challenging and matters and I'm proud to be the District Attorney for Boulder County. I'm Jana Peterson, Director of the Administrative Services Department and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about our accomplishments from 2017 and what we're looking forward to next year. Our biggest accomplishments of 2017 really focused at the Recycling Center we had a significant equipment improvement project out there, a $2.8 million system upgrade to add optical sorting for plastics at the recycling center. This means that community members can recycle new and different types of materials. It also means that we're getting more money um, from the materials that we sell at the recycling center. So really a big win for us around the new equipment upgrade. We also, for the first time in 17 years, bid out the contract for operation of the Recycling Center and awarded it to our longtime partner, EcoCycle, through a competitive process. And that five-year contract is really aimed at increasing the financial efficiency of the center, making sure that we're delivering the best bang for the buck for the community, and uh, getting some new tons and materials coming into the center, which will help us um, improve the amount and the volume of material that we're recycling, as well as the quality of those materials. In addition to what's going on at the Recycling Center, we are working on a facilities master plan, looking at all of the office buildings and other buildings that the county owns, inventorying them, looking at their age and their condition, and also the future needs that the county is gonna have for that office space. A draft of the facilities master plan will be going to the commissioners by the end of 2017 and it will guide all of our investments in our buildings for 2018 and beyond. We also accomplished a significant migration of our public website, putting out a new platform for the community to be able to interact with the county online. It was a um, significant project in that we moved all of the um, technical side of the website and also um, gave it an improved look and feel for the community. The next project that I want to talk about is what we fondly refer to as BC SWIFT, which are, is our system-wide integrated financial tracking project. This year we were able to select a technical vendor to help us implement these changes and this will be a major undertaking for us in 2018 involving all parts of the county organization 
in becoming more efficient and effective in how we portray our finances both internally to decision makers and to the community. This um, project will really completely transform the way Boulder County organizes our financial information and we want to become a leader not just in Colorado but in the nation for how we present information to the public about our finances. Around the area of inclusivity, the Human Resources Division is working with the Commissioner's Office on creating some training for our supervisors who are performing hiring practices throughout the county. In a very competitive workplace, we want to make sure that we are being as inclusive as possible in our hiring processes and that we're adopting best practices from other um, businesses and organizations across the country where inclusivity is a focus. And the last project I want to talk about is um, one that's internal to the county but very important because it touches every single one of our desktops and that is the Microsoft rollout. So we are finally upgrading our Microsoft software for the county and every county employee will benefit from these new productivity tools um, and a new look and feel for how Microsoft is used at the organization. The last thing I want to say is just thank you to the Administrative Services Department staff and to all the staff throughout the organization who help us in accomplishing these great projects. We couldn't do it without your support. Thank you. Hi, I'm Eric Lane and I'm your Parks and Open Space Director. Today I want to give you an idea of what we accomplished in 2017 and a look at some of the things that we're going to take care of in 2018. After several years of planning and preparation, our flood restoration efforts on the ground are well underway. In 2017, we completed all repairs and improvements to Pella Crossing, one of our most appreciated parks in the county's open space system, as well as Beelands Hawk, just south of Longmont. We've initiated the South St. Vrain Creek restoration project just upstream from Lyons, as well as the St. Vrain Creek Reach 3 restoration project. In all of our flood restoration projects, we strive to improve the resiliency of the stream and landscape for future flood events and enhance public safety for neighboring and downstream communities. Aside from flood recovery, we're always busy working to restore ecosystems. We had a successful year with forest and grassland restoration, especially with fuels reductions and prescribed burns. At Heil Valley Ranch, we're completing a 35-acre forest thinning project near Lyons. And at Hall Ranch and Ron Stewart Preserve, we completed 225 acres of prescribed burns. This year was an important one for real estate transactions, and we had three priority acquisitions. The Wheeler Ranch, which includes 230 fee acres and is part of the East County Environmental Conservation Area. The Mayhofer Farm, which includes 165 fee acres and 34 conserved house lot acres. We completed this purchase in cooperation with Lafayette and Louisville and the Trevarden acquisition, which includes 740 fee acres and permanently prevents the development of this property which borders Highway 36 between Boulder and Lyons. In 2017, we were really pleased to complete and open several new trails. In the spring, we opened the five mile open sky loop at the Lagerman Agricultural Preserve just west of Longmont. In the summer, we opened the two mile Overland Loop at Heil Valley Ranch. More than 600 volunteers contributed over 2,300 hours of labor towards building the trail. The Agricultural Resources Division continued its strong efforts to improve irrigation infrastructure at several of our properties, including a 126-acre lateral sprinkler at the Quicksilver property and 3,100 feet of buried pipeline with 31 sprinkler risers at Red Wagon Farm on the Bishop property. At the fairgrounds, we upgraded the public announcement systems and also improved the farmer's market vendor area by replacing the crusher fine service with pavers. In 2018, we will update the electrical system and the exhibit building to better serve exhibitors and upgrade our Wi-Fi capabilities. Lastly, here are a few numbers we're really proud of. With our ongoing programs and one-day projects, we engaged 3,060 volunteers who contributed more than 33,000 hours of their valuable time to help Parks and Open Space deliver everything from new trails to native seed for prairie restoration. 85% of our staff worked directly with volunteers or provided behind the scenes assistance. In addition, our partners program engaged 62 partner organizations ranging from the Boy Scouts to Google in stewardship activities across our parks and open spaces. Together, staff, volunteers, partner organizations, and others helped manage and protect our community's public lands and to deliver services and experiences to the nearly 1.5 million visitors to parks and open space properties this year. Thanks to everyone who helped make this possible. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Michelle Krizik, the Commissioner's Deputy. And in 2017 and 2018, the Commissioner's Office is brought to you by the letter C. We've, we are transitioning to only use acronyms. Our first acronym is CREAC. The Commissioner's Office brought a new position online in 2017 to help bring CREAC's roadmap into fruition. We'll continue working on that in 2018 and beyond. Our next acronym is CC4CA. Colorado Communities for Climate Action. Our sustainability group and policy team have been working really hard with communities across the state to develop a new organization that will help promote climate action at the state of Colorado. This is an important issue and we are providing a real leadership role across the state. Our next acronym is CCAT, Counties and Commissioners Acting Together. You may know that Boulder County has not been a part of the CCI for several years. And instead, we've been working with an alternate group of counties and commissioners who have like-minded goals and are working together at the state legislature on many issues of importance to Boulder County. Finally, we have CORR, C-O-R-R. -R. What is CORR? This is a brand new one for 2018. That's the County Office of Resilience and Recovery. So as we move through our flood recovery and into a more resilient community, we have a new program which is gonna help county departments and offices become more resilient. So look for more information about CORE as we move into 2018. And I really wanna just acknowledge that we still are working through flood recovery. It's a huge, huge project. So many people have worked so hard. As of November, we only spent 61% of our flood recovery money. And I just want to thank everyone who's worked so hard on flood recovery. We have a long way to go. And there are folks who have been working really hard for many years. And then there's others who have filled in so that their teammates can work on flood recovery. And we just need to remember, this is the year we need to finish strong. Oh, you may have noticed, we didn't have a video from Bruce Knight, our budget director. Bruce retired in 2017. But in 2018, we've got a new budget director, Ramona Farino. Unfortunately, she's too busy trying to figure out the budget to do a video. So please, when you see Ramona, congratulate her on her new job. And if you want anything in your budget for 2018, you better be nice to her.